This video is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the Dragonfly range of USB DACs. Click to audioquest.com for more information. So I think I've been leading up to making this video for at least five years, so longer than we've been making proper YouTube videos. And really, if you're a separate guy, if you like to have separate streamer, separate DAC, separate amp, feeding your loudspeakers, then this video is not for you. You can wander off, watch something else. Please, I really, I want you to. Please, with the greatest respect, this video is not for you and you should really go away. So I'll just wait for you guys to clear the room. Yep, I think they're gone. Okay, so now that everybody here is not religiously into separates, we can talk about something that I have dubbed Futurefy. This concept of Futurefy came to life on my website in about 2017. And you've probably seen me reference it in some of my videos here on YouTube. And it relates to audio hardware and software that I think points to a very prominent, a very lively future for hi-fi, especially hi-fi that talks more to a mainstream audience, so it's less it's less niche it's less train spottery, it's less garden shed. Now, if we go back to really how hi-fi systems have been built in the past, right? We have a pair of passive loudspeakers powered by an amplifier or maybe an amplifier and a, a pre-amplifier. Usually our amplifier is integrated these days, although not always. And then feeding that, we'll have a DAC and then feeding that, we'll have a streamer. That's a lot of boxes that require a hi-fi rack, that's a lot of physical intrusion, that's a lot of cables connecting it all together. And therefore, that's also a fair amount of complexity, especially for the newcomer. Now, Futurefy's aim is to dial down the box count, and in some cases, reduce the size of those boxes, and therefore, reduce the amount of cable salad that we have to deal with. Now, the best way to explain Futurefy is to exemplify. So I'm going to lead you through 10 steps that you might want to take for you to reach Futurefy Nirvana. So step one on our journey with Futurefy is basically to move the DAC and put it inside the amp. So you might want to look at amps that are made by Peachtree. So their range of Nova amplifiers from the last, what, 14 years? I mean, the Peachtree original Nova was the first kind of Futurefy thing I ever bought in 2008 or nine. And then you've also got something like the NAD D3020, which has a DAC inside. So too does the AudioLab 6000A. Step two is to bring the network streaming component into the amplifier as well. So inside our integrated amp, we have a DAC and a network streamer. Marantz makes something called the PM7000N, is a good example of, yeah, an integrated amp with a network streamer and DAC inside. Step three might be to have uh, an integrated amp with a DAC and a streamer, but also an HDMI socket on the back so you can have it talk to your TV. A good example of this is the Blue Sound Power Node. Step four, well actually step 4A, is to get a better amp with a DAC and a streamer and an HDMI connection on the back. And that might be something like the name Unity Atom. Now step 4B is really for people who still want to spin vinyl. Because if you look at something like the Cambridge Evo 150, you have an integrated amp with a DAC inside, with a network stream inside, with an HDMI socket on the back, but it's also got an MM phono stage inside as well. Now step five might be to have an integrated amp with a DAC, with a network streamer, with an HDMI socket, but also add in room correction software. 
There aren't too many of these knocking about. There's the NAD M10 V2, which integrates Dirac, and there's the Lingdorf TDAI 1120, which integrates Lingdorf's Room Perfect software. And that's really as far as we can go with Futurefy when it comes to passive loudspeakers. So basically what I'm talking about here is a sort of super integrated amp that does everything that you want, powering a pair of passive loudspeakers. Let's pause for a moment to talk about Futurefy streaming software. And this might be a little bit spicy for some of you, because I would like to see a streaming software future where there are no manufacturer supplied streaming apps. Why do I say this? Well, basically because they vary in quality enormously. So at one end, you've got things like Auralix Lightning DS, You've got Blue Sounds Blue OS, which are great. And then at the other end, you've got things like M Connect, which manufacturers are supplying with multi thousand dollar pieces of hardware, which I think is frankly embarrassing. So I would like to see a future, a future five future, where we only have things like Rune, we have things like Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, and things of that ilk, third party solutions. Now you might be thinking, well, what about Kobos? What about Deezer? What about Amazon Music HD? Well, that's what AirPlay for an iPhone user and Chromecast for an Android user are for. And then I guess in a real emergency situation, you could fall back to Bluetooth, but that's not really optimal. You want to stay in the network streaming world, really, I think. Lastly, for you whatabouters, what about Plex and PlexAmp? I'm a big fan of PlexAmp. It's just landed on the Raspberry Pi. So you can create network streaming situations with Plex and PlexAmp, but it's not yet being specified by hardware manufacturers, not yet being baked in. So I'm really enthusiastic about the protocols, Rune, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, AirPlay, Chromecast that are baked in to streaming hardware that come from third parties. So if at this point you're getting the idea that Futurefy is about minimalism and simplicity, then you are definitely picking up what I'm putting down. I've changed what's behind me, I've changed the hardware configuration. Gone are the passive speakers and the Futurefy amplifier. In come a pair of streaming active loudspeakers. So this is the next step really. So if we want to really go, I guess, full force with Futurefy, steps six through 10, then we have to look at putting all of the electronics piece by piece into our loudspeakers. Step six then is to take our outboard amplifier and put it inside the loudspeaker cabinet. Now this doesn't necessarily make it an active loudspeaker, but it definitely makes it a powered loudspeaker. Now the difference is this, is that a powered loudspeaker still has the amplifier before the crossover. So inside the speaker, you've got amp, crossover, loudspeaker drivers, right? A passive crossover made of capacitors, inductors, and resistors. But in an active loudspeaker, what happens is we move the crossover before the amplification stage. So we have crossover, and that's either done with transistors or mainly done with DSP. That then splits the signal according to the number of drivers we have, because each of them have their own amplifier. So really the definition of active is crossover before amplification. Not that we've just got amplification inside a speaker box. Anyway, if we wanna get our music signal into a pair of powered slash active loudspeakers, and we don't have a streamer or a DAC inside our loudspeakers yet, so we're gonna to have to use something like a 
outboard streaming DAC. A bit like those made by Auralic or PS Audio. Basically, any DAC with a volume control can then feed our powered slash active loudspeakers. That's the most basic configuration. Now, step seven might be then to fold the DAC, but not the streamer, into our loudspeakers. So there's a good couple of examples of these, both at very different price points. There's the Audio Engine HD6, which has a DAC inside, but no streamer, although I think it has Bluetooth, but that's not streaming really, not really. And then we have something really expensive like the Key 3. And both of those setups, so both the Key and the Audio Engine, rely on having an outboard streamer. However, there are a couple of companies, a few companies, that make active loudspeakers where there is a wireless connection between them and an outboard streaming box. So I'm thinking of Dali, Bookart, and Elac. So then step eight is that once we've got our DAC inside our loudspeaker, we can then look for active loudspeakers with a DAC, with an HDMI input if we need that to interface with our TV viewing. So three examples are the Klipsch, the fives that we've reviewed recently. There's the new KEF LSX2, and there's also the SVS Prime Wireless Pro. So that means that step nine on our road to Futurefy Nirvana is basically putting the last component, the last piece of the puzzle inside the loudspeaker. So we essentially have a streaming active loudspeaker. So inside the speaker, we obviously have the speaker drivers. We have the amplification. We have the DACs, because there'll be many if they're, well, there'll be one DAC if it's powered, there'll be many DACs if it's active. And then we have the streamer. Three examples of these are the Lin Series 3. There's also something we reviewed recently, the KEF LS60 wireless. And then there's also the B&W Formation Duo. So is that the ultimate? Is having everything like that, streamer, DAC, amps, speaker drivers, in our speaker the ultimate? Is that the best that we can get? Well, there's one more thing we can add. Step 10 relates to loudspeakers that have the streamer, the DAC, the amps, and the drivers built in, but they also have room correction smarts. The first example that comes to mind is the Dutch and Dutch 8C. Now I would say this is a loudspeaker mainly for power users because you have to measure each speaker's output in the room using Room EQ Wizard, I think. And then you can make adjustments inside the speaker to compensate for the room anomalies that you measure using Room EQ Wizard. So basically you're correcting the output of each Dutch and Dutch loudspeaker for the room. However, the pair of speakers behind me is the Dynaudio Focus 30. And I think they are the first speaker in the world, actually, to integrate Dirac room correction software. So in these, we have like a, yeah, a streaming front end, we have DACs, we have amplifiers, we have speaker drivers, but also the Dirac portion. I haven't reviewed them yet. I'm in the process of kind of digging into them at the moment, but they're, they do room ready, they do Spotify Connect, they do Tidal Connect, they do Chromecast. The only thing that they lack is an HDMI socket. But for me, I guess on, on my own personal journey through Futurefy, this is a next level step, right? This is, I guess, with Dirac on board, making room correction of a pair of active, sorry, a pair of streaming active loudspeakers much more user friendly. <laughs> So in my 10-step program, 10-step <laughs> program, to Futurefy Nirvana, we've gone all the way from just having separates to having everything inside the speaker. Now the examples that I've given along the way are obviously not intended to be an exhaustive list. I'm just giving examples that come to mind at time of taping. 
If you can think of something that suits one of the steps, please let us know in the comment section below. Please specify the step as well. So say what step number and then what piece of gear you think might suit that step. Also, many of the streaming amps and some of the streaming loudspeakers that I've mentioned in this video have subwoofer outputs and some of them have internal bass management software to make integrating a subwoofer a whole bunch easier and some of them even correct it for the room as well. Now notice that I have said nothing, nothing about high-res audio. High-res audio really for me is not part of Futurify, not at all. Now that we have many streaming services offering pretty much their entire libraries as CD quality, and you can't say that about high-res, not even close. Now that we have that, I guess I think that for me is, it's enough. You know, we've just gotten rid of lossy compression we're sort of back to having a CD shop in our home when we use Tidal or Kobos or Amazon or Apple Music. I think that's fantastic. That's as far as I think that needs to go. What about headphone listening? Now, I'm still a little bit hazy on this. I haven't really clarified my thoughts. But where they are right now is this. So you've got a nice pair of headphones. You could probably listen to them at home, but I think like an all-in-one sort of streaming headphone amplifier is probably what I would call Futurify for home. I'm thinking specifically of the name Unity Atom Headphone Edition. I'm not thinking of like separate streamer, separate DAC, separate headphone amp, not at all. So really, it's basically what I've applied to passive speakers. So bringing the streamer, the DAC, and the amplifier into one single box. If we then think about streaming active loudspeakers and their equivalents in the headphone world, it definitely isn't wired headphones with an outboard DAC or an outboard headphone amp or even a digital audio player. I don't think these are Futurify at all. I think the equivalent to streaming active loudspeakers are actually Bluetooth headphones. And I think the only thing that will have people turning their noses up is basically because right now there is no lossless for Bluetooth. But it's coming, I think, I'm pretty sure it is. So basically what we're doing is we're streaming from our phone to the headphones, the headphone captures the stream, then some DSP will eliminate in many cases some of the environmental noise, and then that DSP will also optimize the output of the driver, and then it will go off the amplification that then powers the headphone driver. I don't think you could get more Futurify than that inside a headphone. I really don't. But I also really think that Futurify for headphones absolutely needs to have the smartphone at the center of that system, especially if you're outdoors. And adding extra things to your smartphone, no, which is why I think once lossless Bluetooth headphones become available, there's gonna be a revolution in the headphone market. I really believe this. I think that that will be the kind of the final piece of the puzzle that really kicks Futurify for headphones into gear. Anyway, this is just a conceptual video. This is just me kind of shooting from the hip to talk about an idea that I really has been percolating in, in here for, yeah, five years. And I've, I know I've kind of dribbled out bits and pieces over the years in videos, but I really wanted to distill it all into one video. So this video really is what the hell am I talking about when I'm talking about Futurify. So I hope you found it useful. And if you like this video, please give it a like down below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio in the really, yeah, I still love passive loudspeakers and all the separates. I do love that part of Hi-Fi, but this, this sort of Futurify element that kind of talks to the minimalist inside me is just as appealing. And I think really if high-end audio, like super expensive audio or anything other than Sonos, basically, anything other than Sonos if that's going to talk to the mainstream, it needs to be like Sonos. So it needs to be streaming active loudspeakers because that's essentially what Sonos speakers are, right? That's the connection. That's where people can make the mental jump if they look at a pair of these Dyn Audios in a shop. They go, oh, it's just like a more expensive, better sounding Sonos. So anyway, that's another <laughs> additional ramble. If you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Now this concept of Futurify, I, no, that's all right. And it relates to audio hardware and software that I think's very prominent future of hi-fi. Oh God. So step one, 
on our on, Marantz makes something called the PM7000A. Is that right? No. So I would like to see a future where we just have, sorry, I'm going to sneeze. And the amplifier talks to the crossover inside the loudspeaker and the crossover splits the signal between the drivers. It's very, very hard to find actually. These, these kinds of products aren't so common yet, but I think they're going to come, but I think they're going to be, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where... Microphone. <laughs> Into the microphone. <laughs>